Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about creating the user interface to display the player power cooldowns. And a special thanks to all my supporters. Thank you for helping me help others. To show the player power cooldowns, we first need to create a new widget. We'll go user interface widget blueprint. This is of type user widget. We'll call this WBP ability cooldown bars. And here we're going to add a canvas panel and then a progress bar. We'll call this primary bar. We'll just make it a uh, 100 by 100. I'm going to move this first one over 60. In our style here, we're going to make the background image tint black. And for the fill image, we'll just fill this with one of our epic icons. Just put the press set up to 0.5 so we can see that it's at least partially working. And the draw as here we want as image. We want our fill type to be bottom to top. And lastly, the reason that we're not seeing the actual uh, red bits in here is that the default tint on a progress bar is set to, oh, that wasn't it, is down here. The fill uh, color and opacity is set to no red. So we'll just make this white. And there we go. So we can then just duplicate this a few times. Call this one secondary bar. Movement bar. And utility bar. Just change the icons on each of these. and move them around a bit. So we want, all right. I was originally gonna put this in a diamond shape, but I actually want it just a two by two grid. So the second and the last, can move over 120. And then the third and the fourth can go down 120. Check the right ones. Okay, that's the right order. All right, in our graph, we're going to add a new variable. We'll call this owner ASC. As I'm sure you can guess, that is an ability system component. And then we want two arrays. We'll call one tag containers. This is uh, linked to the array made in the previous video. In this case, it will be a gameplay tag to container. Let's see why shortly. That will be also an array. And then we'll create one for the progress bars themselves. We'll just call that bars. Type progress bar. It would be nice if you could just compile, go down here as a default value and just add those four bars we created. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to do that because they don't exist in this list and you can't use the, uh, the UI there to select them either. So due to that, we're going to create a few functions. First we have init tags. This will take as an input variable tags and this will be gameplay tag as an array so in here we can just do a simple for each loop we're just taking our gameplay tag and we're going to call 
make gameplay tag container from tag. This effectively just turns the tag into a container because the container is what we will need later. And for that, we'll just get our tag containers array, call add, throw it in there. All right, and then we also want an update progress, as in progress bars, progress, not progress. Uh, we're going to set a local variable. Over here, we'll call this percent. Now that you can see it. And this is simply just a float. That is not an array. We're going to set that initially to 1. The progress bar uh, percent is, is 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. We're going to set a sequence. So that's what we've seen before. We're just going to use the sequence to set the percent if it's valid. And also this function needs inputs for the progress bar. Again, singular. We'll just call this bar and also the tag container. Which, not surprisingly, is a gameplay tag container. So once we have, have that, we can call get bar to get our passed in parameter. That's going to be used to call our set percent with the percent that we just created. So in here, what we're doing is we're getting our owner AFC. It's going to make sure that it's valid. Always a good habit. Using the AFC, we're going to get active effects with all tags. So if you've ever used this, you might go in and you'd be like, okay, well, I added a tag with a gameplay effect to the character. I can just select that, that in here. Uh, the problem is, and the way we, or the reason we did this, is because this list of tags was specifically from the previous video. Oops, fireball. That is why we added the asset tag here. If this, uh, if this was gone and it was only the tag that's added to the target, it would not be able to find it when it's looking for active uh, gameplay effects. That's why that's added here. This is the value that we're sending in. So this is our get tag container. Now, as long as this is not empty, We can use this to get the first entry and call oops, get active gameplay effect for remaining duration, as well as get active gameplay effect total duration. So now that we have those two values, we can just divide. This will get us our percent value. Uh, but since I want it uh, going bottom to top, we're then also going to subtract. Just drag this to the second pin, alt click the first. We want one minus that value that was calculated. And that will be sent to or set to percent. So 
back in our event graph, we have a few things here. First of all, we're going to get our owning player. That is giving us the player controller that owns this UI. We use that to call get controlled pawn, which will give us our character, or at least the character version of our, our third person character. Uh, and then get ability system component can be used on that, which is what is being saved to our owner ASC. And then as I was stating earlier, we can't just easily add uh, the bars to, to this uh, array. So we're going to do that manually here just by calling add four times and sending in the correct bar. So this is why the order matters, because it's going through the array and matching up the, uh, the bars to the, uh, the, the other array, the tag containers. Make a few copies. We have our secondary movement and utility. And then in our event tick, we're going to do a for loop. The index of this loop will go from zero to the tag containers length minus one. And we're using that to get our index or get the item from the bars array as well as the tag containers array. To call update progress. Lastly, for this, we need to initialize and call our init tags, and we'll do that from third person character. This array was created and filled out in each of the, uh, the subclasses, Manny and Quinn. And here in our event graph, we have our initialization up here, which is calling init UI. So at the end of init UI, we can add again. Get our WBP. Oh, hey, I should add that to the HUD first. Let's go and do that. So in our HUD, we need to go find our user created ability cooldown bars. Add that to our canvas panel. We'll just make that, uh, so it's 200 for the two things, 20 for the spacing. So it's 220 by 220. Drag that over here. And now we'll find WBP ability cooldown bars. As usual, we'll just promote this to a variable in case we ever need it. And use that to call init tags, sending along our ability tags.
Oh, right, it's the auto uh, resizing stuff, so I should have done anchor it to, I'm going to hold control and shift, bottom left corner, and just respace it a little bit. Right now when we run, it's in the right place. So we'll go and hit Q. You can see five seconds, that's going up. Mash Q, nothing's working until it's uh, available again. Now when you use ability like this, you can see it's a hold ability. The, uh, the timer started immediately after I started using it as opposed to starting when you end. That's fine if that's your design. If you don't want that, then you can just, as I was saying earlier or in the previous video, in laser beam and similar like frost breath, you might want to in the release portion that you manually add the gameplay effect cooldown uh, for that ability. And then in the gameplay ability, you have to check the ability blocked tags instead. Lastly, we have our utility and movement. So it's all working. Let's we'll check the many character as well. We'll do our primary, secondary. Oh, secondary is not working. Cooldown's working because I'm mashing the button and it's not doing anything. The utility's working and the dash is working. All right, so the reason that's not working, if we go in, in here, we can click on this, we'll show our debug stuff. If I hit the primary, you can see the uh, cooldown is added. If I hit the others, space, utility, they're all in there. When I hit secondary, nothing was added. And the reason why that is, is because in here, even though, oh, not in here, in the GA, even though it's down here as a cooldown, you can see right here in activate ability, I'm immediately, oh yes, this was where I had missed when I copy pasted it. Uh, so commit ability is not being called. That's why it was missing. So let's fix that from the ice rain video. I'm not going to move everything around to make that look good, but that's, uh, that's what was missing. If I go back into Manny, there we go. Ice rain starts. The tag is added and the cooldown is checking the tag. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel, watch these videos two weeks early, or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.